Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some romance books with disability representation. I have a lot of videos on my channel recommending books with disability representation. I'll link them all down below. I actually have a playlist for you to watch. And this is a collaboration with Victoria from Victoria's Romance Reads and Tori from A Novel Life. We're all going to be recommending books with disability rep for y'all. It is Disability Pride Month. Love that. So we're here to recommend books with disability representation for y'all. So be sure to go check out their videos. I'll link them down below. I'll link their channels. Please go check them out. I love both of these women so much. And so today's video, I'm actually going to be compiling what I think are my top 10 romances with disability rep. So it is kind of like repeats of past videos, but I'm compiling like my top 10 into one for y'all. So this was very hard and I love like all the books that I've recommended with disability rep, but like these I think are like my favorites, which was so hard to choose. First one that I obviously have to mention is Out on a Land by Hannah Bonham Young. This is the romance between Wynne and Bo. Both these characters have disabilities. So Wynne was born with a limb difference, which is actually own voices for Hannah. She was also born with a limb difference. So her hand is less developed as you can see on the cover here. Um, and this is her romance with Bo, who is an amputee. He had cancer and he lost his leg to cancer. Anyway, these two have a one night stand that was absolutely fantastic. Um, but then Wynne finds out that she is pregnant. And since this is a friends to lovers, surprisingly, with her being pregnant. So when they find out that she's pregnant, they decide to just be like friends. They're like, we're gonna be friends. We're gonna put our relationship strictly platonic friendship wise, because we want to make sure like we have the best relationship possible for our future kid out there. So they actually move in together to provide the best life possible for their kid to co-parent and all that jazz. And um, they actually end up falling for each other through this romance. And it is absolutely beautiful. I love it so much. And it's like one of my new favorite books of all time. And I cannot relate harder to a book when it came to disability rep than this book right here. Next I have Rush by Emma Scott. So our hero in here is visually impaired. He was like an extreme sport person. So he would do extreme sports and like dangerous stunts and write articles about them for like this very popular website. I think he's like cliff jumping one day and he gets injured and he loses his sight from it and he's not been able to see since and he has absolutely hated his life, hated the world since then. He is living as a shell of a person. Enter our heroine who has been hired by his family to kind of be his live-in caretaker of sorts. She is going to make sure that he eats, that he takes care of himself, even though he does not want her there at all. He literally like screams at her like get out of my house. He does not want her there but she is determined to make this job work. She is a musician. She is trying to save up money to um, go to Juilliard. She's in Juilliard. She needs money for tuition and his family is very rich and they're paying her quite a lot of money to take care of him and for a free place to stay in his apartment with him. Hearing her play music completely like changes our hero. He'll just sit without her noticing, like without her knowing that he's there, like just sit and listen to her play and practice for hours. And it like completely changes him, I swear. And the way the hero learns to navigate life with his disability now, like, oh my gosh, he goes through so much in here. And I need more people to read this book because it is so underrated. Next is Broken Whispers by Neva Altaj. This is book number two in her Perfectly Imperfect series. I do know a lot of my friends have started with this book and have been totally fine. So if you want to do that, go right on ahead. I know that book number one is not everyone's favorite, um, but this one is great. So this is the romance between Mikhail and Bianca. So Mikhail has actually been hardcore crushing on Bianca for a while. Bianca doesn't know that Mikhail exists. Bianca is a very famous ballerina and he watches her perform like all the time, is very entranced by her. He is a part of the Russian mafia and his boss, the hero from book one is like, okay, I need someone to like raise their hand and agree to marry this woman from the Italian mafia because we need like an alliance with our families. And when Mikhail hears that it's Bianca, he is all too eager to agree to marry her. And so they meet officially on their wedding day and it is, it is so and so Mikhail actually is also a scarred hero. He has scars all over his face and his body. He's also a single dad. He um, wears an eye patch because he, I think he's either missing an eye or something happened to his eye. And our heroine Bianca was in a car accident to a point where she is not able to dance anymore. Like it ruined her dancing career, which she's absolutely devastated about. And um, it hurt her vocal cords, like her throat was slashed, I think. And um, she cannot speak anymore. Like it's very, very painful for her to speak. So she communicates via ASL. I loved reading about these two navigating their married life together. Like Bianca realizing that Mikhail is a single father and there's a kid in the house. Like, what is she gonna do? How is she gonna take care of this kid? She's not expecting this, but she does, she does amazingly well. Just watching these two fall for each other was very organic because at first they're so awkward. They're like, 
there's like a stranger living with me. What is going on? <laughs> um, but the way they fall in love is very slow and realistic in a sense. So I, I, I love these two so much. A fan favorite that I absolutely love is Always Only You by Chloe Lisa. I could only allow myself to pick one book, like one author. Um, there would be like so many Chloe books on this list if I could pick more, if I let myself pick more, but we're not gonna do that. This is the second book in the Bergman Brothers series. This one is about Ren and Frankie. So Ren is our hero who's a hockey player and Frankie is the social media manager for his hockey team. And she is autistic and she has rheumatoid arthritis and she uses a cane to help her get around. I love the discussion of disability and chronic pain and an invisible illness in this book. Like I hardcore related to Frankie and Ren. Like, I love Ren too, because I really related to him, but these two work on this hockey team, like work for the hockey team, right? He's a hockey player. She works for the social media stuff. Anyway, Ren has been hardcore crushing on Frankie for a long time, but he knows that she's not ready for a relationship. Um, like she has like outright said that. And so they're just friends. Um, and then there comes to a point where Frankie, her house gets broken into and Ren is like, hey, I have a spare room. Come stay with me while your house gets fixed up. Cause there's broken windows, a broken door, broken lock. Like she, it's not safe for her to, live there right now so she moves in with Ren for a little bit with her dog and this forced proximity element enhances the attraction between the two of them for freaking sure there's like this one towel scene that lives in my head absolutely rent free between these two so I love I love these two with my whole heart and chest like Chloe wrote her heart out with this book one of my favorites of all time is Get a Life Chloe Brown because I feel like this was the first book that I fully like fully felt seen while reading um when it came to like a chronic illness so Chloe has fibromyalgia which is a chronic illness that's very similar to my own. It's like an invisible disability that like I relate to so hard. I don't have fibromyalgia, but my chronic illness is very similar to her. This is her romance with Red. He's the superintendent of the building she just moved into. So Chloe actually starts out with this book. She's living at home and she almost gets hit by a car and her life kind of like flashes before her eyes. She's like, I need to get a life. And so she makes a get a life list full of things she wants to do basically soon before she dies. <laughs> Not saying that she's gonna die, but like that car accident moment, like her life flashed before her eyes and realizes she hasn't done a lot with her life. So she, she wants to do more. She doesn't get along with her superintendent, Red. Um, but things happen where um, they get in like to this agreement where she will help him build his website for his art that he creates. So he will help her um, complete her get a life list. And there are a bunch of things in there that he's gonna help her with that are really hot and fun, okay? Um, but I love this one so much. I felt so seen reading this. Like this is one of the first books that I ever read too. I think the first book that I ever read where um, a character uses a shower chair and I just like broke down crying. Cause like I use a shower chair and I've never seen that before in a book. Ever. So I love Talia. I love her books. I love her representation. Again, a lot of her books could be on this list too, but I let myself only pick one. I did want to include like a more recent read of mine. So this is Song of the Abyss by Emma Hamm. This is her second book in the Deep Water series, which is her like mermaid, merman romances. So this story is about our villain from book number one, our mermaid creature. He's like humongous. He's freaking huge. He's like 18 feet long. And he's been tasked by his people to go find the like ruler of this underwater city, um, find the ruler's daughter and basically take her for like ransom and like kidnap her to try and save his people from this evil ruler. Little does he know that that girl is like, uh, take me with you, please. I hate my dad. <laughs> so she's going to help him take down her father. Um, and it's their romance. She is hard of hearing. Something happened with her dad and um, she is, I think, completely deaf in one ear and hard of hearing in the other. And she has this droid that is able to like um, put glasses over her face and kind of like close caption what people say, which I absolutely love. And I wish that happened in real life. Like, like that is so cool. And then our hero has a limb difference. In the previous book, he actually lost his arm. So he now only has one arm. So I just really enjoyed this one. I really loved Emma Ham's representation. You can tell that she like really trusted and went with her um, like sensitivity readers when it came to the representation in this book. Another book that uses prosthetics is Debbie's Distraction by Ruby Dixon. This is one of my favorite Ruby Dixon books of all time. She has great disability rep in her books, like really good. She has a wide range of representation. But again, I only had to pick one. Let's do this one. Um, so this is about Nadek and Debbie. So Nadek is an alien hero on this planet. And um, a few years ago, he actually lost his leg and he has felt absolutely awful since then. He thinks he cannot be like a full person or even have a mate if he's not able to provide for them. And he's like, how can I do that if I'm not able to walk on my own. And so he goes up to Debbie, who is a human who he figures out is a scientist and is like, can you help me build something? And she goes all in. She's like, oh my gosh, yeah, let's build you this prosthetic. Let's help you get walking again. And these two end up falling for each other, even though Nadek is like a very 
gruff, broody man, but he ends up falling for this little scientist chatterbox woman. It is so good. Like this is a fan favorite for a reason. If you want a fantasy romance, I have A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. I know Tori also loves this book. This one's about Matic and Yvette. So Matic is this barbarian warlord guy on this fantasy realm and he recently found out that his parents were killed. He thinks that Yvette, who is the daughter to a different ruler, is responsible for their deaths. So There's like a rumor going around that she's responsible for it. But before he's able to track her down, she ends up finding him first and telling him like, hey, I'm not responsible for your family's death. My dad is, and I know the perfect way to get back at him. Let's get married and take over his throne, even though we hate each other. Because he doesn't fully believe that she had nothing to do with his parents' death. So um, yeah, so um, these two get married, even though they absolutely hate each other, cannot stand each other. Um, but I mean, like ha hate doing it is a thing. And it's really hot in this book, just saying. Um, so yeah, so Yaven is our character with disability representation. So she was kept in a large, tall tower by her father growing up. And she, I think, was either pushed down the stairs or fell down the stairs in the tower. And she has not been the same since. She walks with a limp. She has a bunch of scar tissue. She fell when she was a child. And so her body was still developing and forming. Um, when she fell and hurt her leg and so she walks with a limp and she's very small in stature but she is such a strong queen like she is so freaking strong i love her like she is a role model of mine lastly i have two historicals so let me grab those first is never seduce a scot by maya banks i've talked about this book all the time i love this book um our heroine is deaf our hero is a clan leader but he's the clan leader to the heroine's clan's family like he's rivals with them but the king of the land is really sick of the montgomery family and the armstrong family like fighting and so he's like let's get these two married and like kind of like unite the families and so that's what happens these two get married and at first the hero thinks that something's like up with the heroine's brain is like she's not fully there and so he's not going to like pressure her or do anything with her because like I'm, I'm not gonna do that to a woman of course not he doesn't know that she's just deaf like she doesn't know what's she like knows what's going on she just can't hear and her whole family has no idea that she's deaf but she has been quiet since she got injured and fell off a horse and lost her hearing because she was set to marry this horrible guy who told her all the time that he was going to do these horrible debauched things to her and if she stayed silent and um didn't speak her voice then she wouldn't have to marry that man and so she's been kind of like in the shadows ever since then trying to keep to herself not give herself any attention because she does not want to marry the awful man so when she marries graham our hero like things completely change and she is going to show him like how strong and capable of a woman that she is she just can't hear but she's able to do like everything else and then my last one is my darling duke face stacy reed our hero is a wheelchair user and our heroine um she wants the best for her younger sisters but back in this time period you were not able to like go and find a husband if you had an older sister who was not either engaged or married so she makes this rumor that she is engaged to this very reclusive duke so that her sisters can go out to society and make batches and get the best out of life but no one's seen this duke in like years and he shows up at one of the parties and he wants to know who this woman is who is spreading rumors about him because he's not engaged to anybody so when he meets kitty our heroine he realizes oh my gosh wait like i'm I kind of like her. So let's see how far we can go with this fake engagement and like see what happens. So the hero is a wheelchair user. He got injured and his doctors are telling him that he'll never walk again. Um, but he uses a lot of mobility aids to get around. He uses crutches as well. So I just loved the whole representation here. Like it, it was really good. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romances with disability representation. If you've not read any of these 10 books, I highly recommend them. They're like my favorite. Okay, I love them a whole heck of a lot. Be sure to go check out Tori and Victoria's videos down below. I just know they're gonna have fantastic recommendations for you. So please go check out their videos. Um, and again, if you want even more recommendations, I have a whole playlist down below for you to go check out. I think there's like 10 videos in there, which is like a hundred books that I recommended because I have to recommend 10 books a video. So if there's 10 videos, there's like a hundred books. So I bet you're there's something for you to check out. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any flower emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.